in this motherfucker with QP, man. What's good with you, man? I know what's good with that boy. Uh, I felt good about the first two rounds. You know what I'm saying? Like, the crowd took in both me and Johnny Storm's bars in its entirety. Uh, you feel me? And they was fucking with it up until the third round. You feel me? In my third round, I, I might have had my delivery a bit too slow. And then at the end of my third, like in the middle of it, I went at Teddy Grizzle because I have some issues with him outside of battle rap. You know what I'm saying? He's the he's the Jewish dude to put the money together for the whole event. He's the one that spent the 120. You know what I'm saying? So basically, I was getting reaction by spitting at him, but Calico called time and the DJ threw the music and shit on because I was directly going at the nigga that put the whole event together. So, I mean, I kind of understand why he called time. You feel me? But at the same time, like the shit off didn't tour to Johnny Storm. They wasn't fucking with it. So I was like, okay, that's cool. John got that round. Let me go ahead and get on Grizzle because I got like some underlying issues with him that was outside of battle rap, you feel me? especially having to do with the duel in the desert event. And the reason Clean didn't end up showing up to the battle, I was like, yo, Clean's a little ill-prepared for the battle, but you're still going to bring him out, right? So that, you know, me and Clean could rehearse together and go over our shit. Well, this motherfucker goes back online and tells everybody that I said I'm a ghostwriter, cleans bars for me, for him, and he was he don't have no bars, and I'm not flying out because it's a waste of money. So I mean, so it was like a oh okay, that's how you gonna do me and clean when you fuck with us heavy, you hit us up like yo, come down from Detroit, come from Cali, I'm gonna put y'all up, come down here, move some work for me, so I can't get into it because then that is snitching for me because we have some activities going and outside of like legal shit or whatever. So feel me, and when we got down there, it wasn't what he said it was. You feel me? He said he had this force, and we got down there it was completely different. You know, me and Clean got baby moms, kids, shit like that. So when we bust a move. We need that business to be good, you feel me? So I was talking to him about the real shit. So that when y'all hear the, the bars that I did get to spit to him, it's all real shit, you feel me? So uh, so what was your overall rating of the event as a whole? No, nah, it was a good event. It was a good event. Now, it, it held 2,000 people. only had about two or 300 people in the building, kind of scattered sparse. But it was a, it was an overall good outcome for, like, Arizona, which is a smaller market, you know what I'm saying, for when all this shit is done in big commercial last cities, you feel me, and cities that have a history of big events. This is the first big event for Phoenix, so, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't as big as a crowd as I expected, you know what I'm saying? So, But it definitely was an overall great turnout. The crowd was definitely there to hear the bars, you feel me, and if you was getting through your shit, they was, they was not going to boo you, you feel me? I was rapping too slow in my third round, you feel me, because this is the thing. I was a little ill-prepared. In my third, you feel me? My first two rounds, I was prepared. Third round, feel me on that QP shit, a little shaky. So when I was kind of getting through my rounds, the progression, people were like, boo, like, come on, Q, this is the big stage. You can't come up here, you feel me, stumbling or any of that. So I felt the crowd for booing me. But then that's why I went into the grizzle shit, because I knew that shit like the back of my hand, because, you know, real rap shit ain't hard to memorize, you feel me? That shit that I make up with the wordplay and the and the metaphors and the triple entendres, you know, that shit take time to memorize. But when I rap real shit that's real life, like how I did it get clean and shit like that, I remember that shit after one day of writing, you feel me? So that's kind of what I focused on. But otherwise, beside it, I try to like to uh, win the building over instead of winning online or winning a round or two online because they break my bars down wordplay-wise, you feel me? So... That's that's the shit I was working on. What is your take on Daylight's antic uh, for this event? Uh, I, I, this is my thing. He he came with the fake shit last time for the big stage, and then he came with the real shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it, this is the thing. Daylight Battle is gonna do more views than the other niggas. Some of the other niggas that really wrote their shit. So I mean, his little business moves that he makes and how he's trending on Twitter, like that's my nigga too. He knows me and him are, are public stunt artists. So it's like sometimes where the, the little angles that are taken where it goes, I don't be expecting that. You feel me? Like anything that I do, like if I expose Daisy for being like my whole bitch, right? I don't expect for her to put my male ex- escort profile up there and then be like, yeah, he's gay. Like that's these be taking some little side turns. I'd be like, shit, that was. That was nice that she did that. Like, I mean, the little Photoshop shit she did do and all that, I'm like, man, that was actually really nice. Because, like, being a whole bitch, that's not bad. Like, okay, so people know you sold some pussy for some money. You can still breathe out here because, you feel me, we're all niggas. We thirsty anyway. Niggas are still white for Wally to make You feel me? I would. You feel me? Whether she sold pussy or not, I actually respect the bitch to sell pussy more than the one the fucking nigga on, on the couch or whatever. You feel me? For her to take it that way, I'm like, come on, sweetheart. Like, you feel me? And then post the ad for a body massage. That's some of the blonde bitches profile, you feel me? So, like, if you know anything about pimping, anybody out here that's pimping or, or know about pimping around you, then uh, if you pimping online, it's emails that's attached to it. So all my bitches' ads is attached to the emails in my phone and her phone and all three of my bitches' phones, you feel me? It's all simultaneous. When you click your Gmail and you get the option of which account you want to use, I got all four bitches' accounts up there. I got all four of my other bitches' accounts. Like, it's all self-explanatory shit. So when a bitch run off or some shit like that and she got all the ads, then... You know what I'm saying? That shit's at her discretion to respond to or do whatever she wants to do. You feel me? Like, 
she's a scoring chick, and you know I understand the business move. You feel me? Because I kind of stepped out and got outside of my character when the bitch stole two hundred dollars from me on the beach in Cali, booked a bus ticket, my nigga, went to the hotel and showed up to my battle event thinking that I wasn't going like run up on her like, yo, what's what's good with you, ma? Like you gonna steal two hundred from me and think you just gonna show up to this event and nothing happened to you? So I was gonna have my my bitch beat her up again, but I was like, nah, I'll handle this one. Uh, so I'm just I'm outside of the venue around Arsenal, all these fools, like everybody you could think of this mainstream is out there. And then the bitch is talking to me like, oh, you just mad because of this. And now I'm like, bitch, you stole money from me. You here? My bitch don't want to beat you up. Is she on probation? Well, I'm going to just spit on you then. So I spit on the bitch, right? The bitch stole from me four times, my nigga. I tell her, if you steal from me, I'm not going to slap you. I'm not going to choke you. I'm not going to punch you. I'm just going to spit on you because I despise people who had nothing. And I come and get you. When I picked her up from New York, my nigga, like, and she was dating newborn. Newborn was, was done with her because she was kind of fast. You feel me? I take fast girls and I put them to work. So when he, when I got out there, he had her phone off. He had her living at her friend's house, like, nigga, out of a, out of a closet down here. So I picked her up, put weave in her hair, paid her phone bill. My nigga took care of her off battle rap money for a month and a half. Like, I never even made her hope for me, even when I was a pimp. She just upped and was just like, yo, you just got the, the half a pound took in. You know, the Teddy Grizzle got us fronted, and it was $2,500 loss. So she seen that $2,500 loss. And the bitch went to work, and she fucked with me and clean heavy. So I can't even say she just hold for me, my nigga. Even though I got all the money, she hold for me and clean, like, for the simple fact that we down 2500 I'm going to just get in the game and get you 2500 to pay Teddy Grizzle back. You feel me? So that's where this all came from. Like, I'm not Mr. Big Bad Wolf, hunt down a bitch, make her hold for me, never. I'm Mr. I like a bitch, I'm going to knock you, I'm going to trick off on you. And at the end of the day, you're probably going to like me so much. You're going to feel bad that I spent so much of my hard-earned battle rap money and you're going to probably sell your pussy for me. And that's how I usually knock my bitches. Like, I hate giving the game away on an interview to where all my new bitches going to hear it, but I'm going to come with some newer game than that. Day. But I need niggas to know what time it is. You feel me? Like, I'm not upset with Daisy at all for none of the moves she's busting. You feel me? I can't be. Like, the allegations of the gay shit, like, come on, man. Like, I don't even have to answer that question. It's just more like, follow me. Look at my lifestyle. Yeah, that's what looks shit. That's a real story in the sense that I watched the Maury show, seeing two twins, one belong to one guy, one belong to the other. Me and my baby mom have a real open ass relationship, my nigga. Like, we be done fucked around and fucked each other's like best friends and shit, like, and still be together because that's like my soulmate. You feel me? So it's like me and her, nigga. Like, that's never gonna end. So any bitch that comes around should know, like, that's Queen B, and she get crazy. You feel me? And she kind of got crazy when Daisy came around because Daisy was the new bitch. You feel me? No kids. You feel me? Hella young. Bitch don't even know about credit cards and shit yet. Like, she just knew that everything. I don't know what a money gram is or a Western Union. I love my meet girls like that. You feel me? I don't want no professional ass girls. So I basically raised Daisy in 90 days, my nigga. Made her a singing star, a battle rap star. Got her booked four or five shows, nigga. Got her out on the stroll. Like, she don't even got to walk a blade, nigga. All she had to do is sit in a four-star hotel and answer the phone, bro. That's it. Like, you feel me? Like, I'm not even a bad guy like how people portray the picture that QP's this big bad wolf dude, like I'm not. Like, and then as far as battle goes in businesses, like QP didn't show up to all his motherfucking battles. This QP, all his battles. So I don't get how niggas misconstrue that I'm bad business. But I tell motherfuckers, if you don't send me Clean's money, you feel me? Because I take, I'll take a, a percentage of Clean's money when they send it directly to me in the sense that he'll be like, give me 1500 or give me 1200 for a battle. So I go contract him a battle for 1800 and get my manager's cut. I tell people to send me the bread, so if he don't show, I'll pay you back. Feel me? Remy didn't show, I took care of three different leagues when Remy fucked off. Not not uh, Milltown Blow, because he was talking all that Vice Lord shit. And, I, you know, Clean told me, like, nigga, don't pay him. Or if you pay him, me, me and Clean going to have a problem, because Clean don't back down to niggas. He'd rather be like, nigga, tell that nigga to eat a dick, you. Like, nah, we don't, we don't do none of that nerd in your window shit over here. Nigga, it's like we don't ride and die with this shit. So I'm on that little program with you. If it ain't the little pimping, because pimping ain't gorilla, it ain't forceful. It's just I'm laid back. You feel me? I'm not no fighter. You feel me? I'm a nigga that keep a pistol and all that shit because I got nothing but bitches around me at all times. I don't even keep niggas around me. You feel me? So it's like I can't live a lifestyle where I'm brolic at all times. Like my lifestyle is mad low profile in a sense that I got to keep it low key anyway. So when niggas be doing all this, I got to kind of expose my hands. So you don't think I'm just out here doing anything. Like, mind you, just cause I had my ad posted three different times. I think I posted it three times. Like my little male escort ad total. You know I me, mean? And that's pretty much to let my bitches know that not only do I have y'all get down and dirty and maybe even do some bareback shit for the right amount. I will go eat a raw pussy. Fuck a fat bitch. You feel me? I'll do the same shit y'all doing and come check some dough to y'all. So I think I busted a date in Minnesota for Daisy. But this is when she was having a hard time turning tricks. So I went and busted a $60 date with a white woman named Pamela. So I mean, I brought that 60 back and handed it to her. And you know how hard that bitch worked for me after I busted that date for? 
Like, it just changes girls' outlook when they see you put yourself out there and have to go through somebody you wouldn't do on a regular daily basis. You feel me? So it's just right. it's just a whole process and shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, no, no, no. They didn't boo me until the third round. Okay, I didn't get okay. booed to the third round. Another thing would be the BVE Entertainment. Like, that's all Grizzles people. So when as soon as they sensed that I was going to go in on it, then it kind of changed. Now, don't get me wrong. In the third round, I just literally was rapping too slow. Because the whole first two rounds, talking about how slow Johnny rapping, monotone, that he that he broke and got the same amount of any kind of minutes on his government-aided Obama phone, all this shit, like, um, that's good. But as soon as I start, you know, gearing over to rapping slow like him and talking about Sam, it was over. So, like, I told you, it was a really, really good crowd. Like, people in the crowd was talking with me cute. They told me, I'm here to see you. You're my favorite lyricist, this, that. So I was comfortable before I even got on stage. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But um, when I came in, yeah, when I came in Grizzle, and it got stopped. It wasn't because Calico was just like, time, time, stop, because I'm still rapping over Calico. Like, nah, this nigga's tripping. That ain't two minutes. You feel me? I got booed my first 30 seconds, so I still in my head, I got another minute 30 just to go in on Teddy Grizzle. You feel me? But he cut that shit short. So that was what was confusing to me. So I'm rapping over Calico, and the DJ put the rapper up BET music on. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that shit had me weak, my nigga. Like, when the DJ, that's when I was like, okay, you give up. That's it, my nigga. Like, two, yeah. two rounds out on Smack, my nigga. Like, you already know your nerd fans don't let us. Don't even trip. Like, you already made the impression you need to make. Nigga, and I'm still booked up all year. You feel me? So all I'm going to do is just use that as a stepping stone to say, when I battle on big stages, it's all jokes, bro. Like, cause everything that was a joke went over well. Everything that was kind of intricate, you feel me? Like, they reacted, but it took them, like, two, three seconds after, you know, my, my shit. Like, from the first line that I spit, my nigga, like, from the, you feel me? Uh, you know what I do for the cheese deliver? Put your dome in a can because Cuban killing Puerto Rico. Even, even that, right? So it took them like five seconds after school. I'm like, okay, I wait. And then it's like a, uh, like a subtle latent reaction. That's kind of how my, all my shit is. So I'm working on like changing that. That's why I fuck with Clean. So I fuck with Farrah because I want to, they're so direct. I want that. I just don't have that. All I got, nigga, is hella bars. My biggest problem is just being overbooked and not having enough time dealing with my real life shit that really pay my bills and then action it with the battle shit that's really like supplement. You feel me? Supplemental income versus my actual viable income that takes care of all three of my baby mamas and my five kids. You feel me? So like, that's all it is with me. But no excuses. When you book, come out there and give a show and do your thing. I felt that I did in the first two rounds, but I felt in the third round I could have been more polished. And I should have probably rapped at Teddy Grizzle, not in his face, like just talking to the crowd. You feel me? Because I got in his face and was talking, and then it was like he had this glassy look in his eyes. Like, not that he was going to cry, but just more like, damn, I can't rap. I'm not a rapper. I threw this shit. How's he disrespecting me? Because I, I think that's corny anyway. But I, I just felt that we really had some real issues. So I was going to talk about it. Nick is like hearing real shit. So, you feel me? But, uh, Shout out to Calico for uh for stopping the mayhem because it was gonna get ugly for Teddy Grizzle. You feel me? I'm gonna have Clean talk to his little brother though. I'm gonna have Clean talk to his little brother. Yeah, but I feel like okay, if Calico's doing that to a QP, it's like you're that nigga to steal on. He wouldn't do that to Charlie Clips or Pat Stay or somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, nah, he a clown. Now nah, he a clown for that, and he a clown for for the simple fact that when he first started coming with his shit with the two four Kobe Bryant eight, like that nigga know he hit me. I was just like, yo, check this shit out. Like, that nigga, his little style or whatever, like, that's my style too. So it's just more like, nigga, respect the nigga that gave you your formula so you could run your shit back. Because Calico's not only a smack nigga, but that was a grind time nigga too. Like, he had the little formula. He's not no dumb nigga. Yeah. Like, he's, he's an intellect nigga. He has smarts about himself. So it's just like, I figured with him having smarts about himself, he would have been listening to what I was spitting. And then he would have came differently. Like, instead of stopping, he should have been like, oh, word. Also, oh, that's why my brother Clean from Detroit, where I'm from, ain't here because the nigga made a promise to me, you feel me, and me clean, and it wasn't that. You feel me? If you tell me you got you got three pairs of J's for me, and when I get there, you got a retail outlet for me to sell because you heard I'm a shoe salesman, right? Because we're going to keep it like that so it sounds legal. You tell me you got 50 pairs of Jordans for me and a shoe out retail outlet for me to sell them out of, and I get there, and you got two pairs of J's for me, and you fronting them to me, and you got no storefront, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, what is me and Clean supposed to do with that? We, ain't, we don't want to sit around with Teddy Grizzle and smoke weed all day in his house. So, I mean, that's what, that's what it was. It was like, we had work. My nigga reversed consignment. He said that he had 30, oh my God, he said he just had that for us. And we got there with consignment and we owed the money off that and, and the work got confiscated in Oklahoma. So, I mean, I rapped about all the shit in the battle. You feel me? Getting into it. Like, then like, you feel me? He did rent the, he did rent the, rent, the rental for us. He, he rented that for us, right? But when it got took and he got back, nigga was like, you owe me for that. You owe me for the shit that was taken in Oklahoma. And I'm like, nigga, how I owe you? When, first of all, I wouldn't even say what you said it was going to be. And second of all...